I have the record of working with them. I'm going to continue to work with them to bring up these opportunities uh, for our neighborhoods. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Let me tell you what I know. So let me give you just uh, my answer to all the questions, right? Here's a scenario. We have a community that started, had rail, and then a community that then transformed itself to be built around the automobile, take advantage of the space. Easterners and Midwesterners moved out here. We built a car culture, and it's in conflict with the vision that we share here. And let me tell you what I know. I've been fortunate as a senator to travel the world and study goods movement and tunneling and transportation, all these things. And I was able to go to Denmark. And so I've seen the conclusion here. I've seen where we want to go. I've seen a community that had five million bikes for two and a half million people. I've seen a community that had bike lanes that were real bike lanes. Not the danger that each one of you put yourself in, the peril for you each time you go out on the street. That is dangerous. It's one of the reasons I don't cycle. It's one of the reasons I stop jogging in the street. Because this community is dominated by the vehicle. And so if you jog in the street, which I enjoyed and was fascinating, and I used to do this downtown when I moved downtown, but it's very dangerous. You get hit. And the math is, is that the two-ton vehicle always beats the cyclist, always beats the jogger. And so we have to figure out how we transform this question of space. And I have a sense of that because I've had the opportunity to go and see what it looks like to be in Mexico City on Sundays and see the Reforma transform, right? So I, I think that these possibilities are possibilities for us, but they require leadership. They require people who have the ability to bring people together to reach these solutions, solutions they don't want, right? And so I have a record. And it's based upon that record, not upon agreements or compromises or quid pro quos, but based upon my record that I have the support of the Los Angeles Chamber of Commerce. And the unions, two groups who seldom agree with each other. But I have their support because they see me as a problem solver and a person who brings communities together. That's why I have to have the support of big business and the leading environmentalists like Fran Pavley, the author of AB32, or Jared Hoffman, the attorney for the NRDC, or Julia Brownlee, who her and I fought to, to, to get rid of plastic bags. Because not because people see me as a person who's ideological on these matters, or a planner on these matters, but a person who can bring resolution. And that's the answer to, to all the questions that you're going to ask. At the end of the day, whatever the specificity is, it doesn't really matter. What matters is do you have the skill set, the capacity, the record, and then the trajectory to get these problems solved? I think our campaign offers that in a very real way. So where do you want to put the corrals? You tell me. It's not something that I'm going to try to impose on the community, rather than let the neighborhoods through a process of engagement, figure out what it is that they want, and let the representative not impose upon them, but take these proposals and make them organic and authentic, and then use the gravitas and skill set and the successes of the past to build for the community the success of our communities in the future. I thank you. <laughs> Yes, of course, absolutely. Uh, there's no question about it. Is this on? No. <laughs> <laughs> walk over here. I'm walking. <laughs> yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, we have to do more. And it's, it's, it's not just a question uh, in this country that we need to do more for people to walk. Uh, it addresses other challenges, healthcare challenges, lifestyle questions of obesity and diabetes, those are also uh, parts of our, our, of our culture, us not walking. Uh, 
you look at people in Europe or in Latin America who walk all the time, it's a different culture and a different uh, lifestyle. But there's also another thing that takes place is that that uh, the fact that these sidewalks are you know uh, popping up through the this floor is that we're we're home locking seniors and people with uh, disabilities, and so they get home locked. They become you know house arrested because of the environment, and they can't they can't get out and walk, and that's simply uh, not thoughtful about a community that's, that's aging, a population as our baby boomers get older, as we begin to take care of our parents, we have to create those communities, those smaller communities that require less of a community, less of a for. And so we have to do the same thing. We have to be very honest and say, look, we, I mean, you know, walking through all these, these, these communities, I mean, just looking at the sidewalks, <coughs> you know, we have to pay for it. We just have to tell people. So how are we going to do it? One would be, there's, we have to support Measure A. That's the bottom line. And if you don't think there's a, a threat to public safety, just think about the current situation now where we have this uh, born wannabe, right? So we have that. We have, we have to make sure we have fire and, and police uh, responses uh, appropriately. And then we have to think about, well, how do we augment that? Because this 200 million is not going to be enough. You could do something like a vehicle license fee, restore it, not increase it, but restore it to what people paid. And that would give you four hundred million dollars just for the city of Los Angeles by itself, and then we could pay for the city's budget, its, its structural deficit, fulfill our commitment to, to to retirees, and then invest in our infrastructure. And that's the only way that we. Yes, of course, absolutely. Uh, there's no question about it. Just on. We have to be very honest and say, look, <laughs> I mean. Yes, of course, absolutely. Uh, there's no question about it. <laughs> I mean, is this on? No. We have to be very honest. Is this on? No. We have to be very honest and say, look, is this on? No. We have to be very honest and say, look, is this on? No. And let me tell you what I know. Right? I've been fortunate as a senator to travel the world and study goods movement and tunneling and transportation, all these things. And I was able to go to Denmark. And so I've seen the conclusion here. I've seen where we want to go. The two-ton vehicle always beats the cyclist. Is this on? No. And let me tell you what I know. Right? I'm going to have to be very honest and say, look, the two-ton vehicle always beats the cyclist. <laughs> I mean, and the math is, is this on? <laughs> The two-ton vehicle always beats the cyclist. The future. 